Things have been really crazy around my shop for the last couple of weeks to the point where I wasn't sure I was going to be able to make a video this week. You know, it's holiday season, or at least it is if you're a maker, and that means you need to start thinking about Halloween and Christmas decorations, uh, which is one of the things I've been busy with. And I'm not alone. Sally, a viewer uh, who I've exchanged many emails with as she's grown from a complete newbie with a laser to now what appears to be an expert, posted this comment asking if I could do a video on how to make jigs. And the reason is because when you're making Christmas decorations, you don't want to make one at a time. You want to make a hundred if you can. So what I wanted to do in this video is, you know, learn how to make jigs. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to the shop. As I mentioned, uh, today is all about making jigs. Now, jigs themselves aren't really that difficult to make. You lay down a piece of material and you cut a few holes in it in strategic places and pop your parts in there and uh, do some engraving. The real challenge comes with alignment of that jig and you want something that you can lay down in your laser, cut 10 of something, pull it out and come back next week and put it back in again and do some more and get accurate results from one session to the next. What I wanted to do here is show you how I make my jigs and some of the tricks there that will help you get that alignment right and also go into the laser and show you how to actually do an alignment. Now, I'm gonna be very careful. I'm gonna use my Muse 3D in Retina Engrave 3, which is the software for FSL lasers, but I wanna make sure I don't use any features that are unique to those lasers. So you won't see me use the camera to, to you know, scan the workspace and then try and align things based on that photo that gets created. This will all be from first principles and this should work on literally any laser that's available. As long as you can position the laser head at a specific point, you'll have no trouble here. So with that, uh, let's get going and I'll show you uh, what I do. So like every good project, we start with a trip through Inkscape or something like it and uh, we're gonna build our template and I'll do it fairly quickly here. First thing we need is an outline for our template and I'm gonna set it to uh, zero, zero, uh, which is the upper left corner of the page. And I'll make it 330 by, uh, well, let's say 170, that should be enough. Actually, I'll make it 180. Now, what I wanna do, the very first thing is to take this, this star I created and I just used the star tool here. Uh, and that really just indicates the upper left corner of the page. I also have this target that I created and you could build your own or I'll upload this file and you can just pull it out of there and use it for your own stuff after if you want. And what I'll do is I'll put it on the page at uh, some known location, say 10 millimeters from the top and, and the left. And next is make sure that there's maybe a target in the center, a target on the right and the same thing on the bottom. So let me just pop that in here and I'll show you uh, what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so I have, I cloned all the targets. What I did was use the, the Inkscape trick where I started with this one, added 150 to this number and it put it there, added another 150 there. And same thing, uh, I then just selected these three and copied them down to the bottom using the same technique. I duplicated them and pasted them in here. So what I'm gonna do is, is create a, a circle for each disc. Uh, I wanna make a template here that can handle three at a time and I know my discs that I have that I created from some other project are 93 millimeters uh, 93 millimeter circles and now I'll align it to the center of the of the template cutout that we have so there it's aligned now I can duplicate it uh, and uh, say 103 so it's 10 millimeters apart and duplicate it again and add another 103 so there's the, the basis for our template. Anything that's black here on the page will be in, engraved. And to simplify things, it's kind of an all or nothing. So what I wanna do is just take all of those things and I'll just combine them uh, as uh, nodes, combined nodes, so that there's one. Uh, and that's kind of a unique thing for Retina and Gray 3. What, it'll, what it allows me to do is turn them all off after uh, because when we're once we're we have the template made, we don't want to keep cutting and, and cutting and engraving the template pieces. We only want to work with what's in the center of these circles, 
and uh, so you can turn them off and it's easier to turn off one element otherwise there's a bunch of them here so uh, it's just a, a simple thing now you might be able to uh, in whatever laser software you're using you might be able to do that easier um, and that's fine if you can but otherwise you can do it this way i went and found just a decoration a rudolph decoration and if i can track it down here on my page uh, i'll just drag it in here and stick it in and yeah, it's pretty close to the right size already so what I'll do is I'll align it to, in this case, the center of the circle. And uh, same thing here, I'll duplicate it and uh, align it to the circle again. And once more. And again, align to the center. So there's our our template and including the first image uh, you can use anything you want here i just grabbed this off of uh, off of google images and the way this worked was i have this now decoration layer which is where rudolph's are and i could turn that off now if i wanted to make another one for a different reindeer or santa claus or whatever uh, i could create another layer and put it put it on there and align it to these circles the same way then just whenever i go over to my laser i can either turn off that layer uh, over there so what i what i could do is i could do the same thing with these i could select them all and combine them and that would turn them all on or off at once. They become effectively one element in, uh, in, in, in Retina and Gray 3. And again, your laser software may be different, but if I, if I do that, then I could turn on a different layer and get a different image, or I could just export this the way it is and save this with Rudolph. Anyway, that's, that's good enough. Uh, so let me save this and uh, I'll show you how to cut it out on the laser. We'll cut the template first and then I'll throw some discs in these holes that get made uh, once we align things and uh, we'll make some, some decorations. But the alignment is the part we want to actually see here. So let me cut this out. Okay, so here we are in Retina and Gray 3, which is my laser software. Uh, all I did was load the SVG file in here. So uh, again, your software may be different, but you should be able to do this. So if I start just expanding this, you'll see that there's five elements here and we can look at them. The first one is the outline. The second, the second bunch are the circles. And then there's one, element one is all of the targets and the star. And then element five is the reindeer. And what we'll do when we're cutting the template is we'll turn that one off and uh, we'll just cut this out now because I, I so what i did was i just shoved a gigantic piece of cardboard into my laser so i know it'll fit when we're cutting the template it doesn't actually matter where it is on the workspace so what i'm going to do just to make sure that i can cut it is i'm going to move it down here and uh, i'll fire up the laser and uh, we'll cut this out Okay, so you saw me cut the template out and I removed all of the uh, outside uh, scrap pieces and put the template back in and pushed it into the upper left corner, noting that the star was there. Okay, so I popped back into Retina Engrave 3 here and uh, this is still the layout that the image was in when we cut it, but I need to push it now into the upper left corner, zero, zero, noting that when we created this, that's where we put it on the page. So. Uh, it's zero zero now it may not be deadly accurate uh, your laser that is so what you can do to test this is this is where we want to put the, the laser the red dot from the laser uh, and if i do that i'll hold on a mac it's the command key on a windows machine it's the control key but if you hold the con command key or control key and hit just click the mouse it will, you'll see the red dot there and let me be a little more accurate here. So that's where the laser thinks it is now on that crosshair. And if we go over to the laser and have a look, uh, we'll see where it actually is and we may have to do some adjusting here. So as you can see from the image up above here, uh, the laser isn't exactly right. So what we can do now is we can just slide the uh, 
the template over until that dot is uh, right in the center of the crosshairs. Now be careful when you're moving this that you're only moving it in one direction at a time uh, because if you twist it then it'll be out of alignment in a, in a different direction. But uh, let's do that first. All right, so after just a couple of minor tweaks here, uh, I have the laser now in the upper left target right in the center. You can see the picture up above here. Uh, and what I did to make that happen was my laser is the alignment of the bed is a little bit different than the home position. So I moved in the Y position, I moved the, the whole image down by one millimeter. And that was enough to, to get the image uh, and the dot lined up. All I, can, all I have to do now is I can, I can zoom down to uh, the target in the opposite corner and using the same technique. And just what we're looking for here is making sure that, that the, the dot is in the center. I didn't quite get it there, so let me just zoom in some more. And if it isn't, we know that the upper left corner is perfect now, so you can rotate the whole, the whole template a little bit uh, just to get it now in the right position and then you could go back to the upper left corner and check again to make sure you didn't move it. So I zoomed into the uh, lower right corner and you can see it's a little bit blurry here because I can't get uh, my camera far enough away to, to get it in focus properly but the, the red dot is slightly up and to the right which means I need to rotate the entire card. So let me, let me go do that and uh, I'll show you uh, what happens. Okay, and now it's, it's lined up perfectly. If I go back to the top left now, uh, it, and it's perfect, then the card is pretty much aligned exactly the way we want it. And moving to the upper left, it was perfectly aligned still, so the card is, is now fantastic. Uh, I can drop some discs into these holes and we can do an engrave and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I have my template there. It's perfectly aligned. You can see the dot when I moved it back up is, is uh, it's showing here in the center. And when I looked at it on the laser, it was perfect. So now I can turn on the, uh, the image that I want to engrave in the center of these. And I'll turn off the rest of the image because I don't want to do any cutting or anything here. Uh, as long as I don't move that card, I know everything is perfect. Uh, so I have my, my my Rudolph images and uh, just for, for fun I'll, I'll uh, do a full engrave on them and uh, I can just fire up the laser now. I'll push the uh, start button and uh, we'll see what it, what it looks like. So there we go, the engraving was done, the template worked quite well. Uh, now you may have noticed on the third coaster, the mystery of the missing Rudolph. I don't honestly know what happened there. You saw it on the workspace, uh, the image was there. Uh, and it was one, it's one con consecutive or one continuous SVG file. So I don't even know how Retina Engrave could, could remove it. But uh, needless to say, it, was, it wasn't there and I don't know why. Uh, I'll chalk it up to one of the mysteries of, uh, of FSL and maybe somebody from FSL can kind of point out what might have happened there. Uh, anyway, as always, uh, you know, hopefully you got something out of this video and go make your world and I'll see you next time.